UFC is back, baby. 249 coming up tomorrow. And I got my brother, Shanksy, to talk about it all. So if you guys are ready for it, Shanksy, tell him what to do, brother. Let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. We're going to talk about UFC 249. I am joined with my MMA expert, Shanksy. What is up, brother? How are you doing? Hey, Valley. It, oh, it is going good, man. It, it has been a while. I, I, missed, I missed our little UFC MMA talks. It's uh, We finally got something to talk about, right? Mate, I've missed the UFC. I've missed sport. I've missed football. I've, I've missed everything. The pubs and the pubs. I've missed the pubs so much. I don't even <laughs> want to talk about the pub. You'll, start, right. you'll, you'll make me break down on camera right now. I All don't right. even want to talk about it. All right, well, let's talk about something cheerful and joyous. Let's talk about the UFC 249. It is finally back. I am so happy to get to watch some spice. Watch some sports. Watch some live sports in general. Yeah. My goodness. All right. UFC 249. This is a stacked main card. It has a stack prelim card but let's talk about these early prelims and you're probably more familiar with all of these prelim fighters than i am so let's Man. just start let's just start right here sam alvey ryan span i'll put my hands up i think this is an amazing card throughout but i'm more excited about these prelim fights than i am the main card um ryan span is a bit of an up-and-comer he's looking super good he's got a lot in his arsenal sam alvey is coming off the back of three defeats, I believe. I Ooh. think this is going to be his fourth, and I don't think he's going to fight again in the UFC after tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with either of these fighters, but the line right now, or as of an hour ago, as of recording, minus 420 for Span, plus 330 for Alvi. I think I got to go with Span. The experts are thinking yeah. that. You're thinking that. All I'll go with Span as well. All right. Bryce Mitchell, Charles Rosa. What can you tell us about these guys? Right, I don't know a huge amount of, um, about Charles Rosa. I've, I've, I've seen his standing. He looks pretty decent. I don't think he's got the power um, to stop Bryce Mitchell. Though. Bryce Mitchell is a scrappy, scrappy, unorthodox kid. He's going to eat you with everything he's got in the tank. He's going to be switching Ooh. stances. And he's got a really, really good ground game as well. I think Bryce Mitchell is definitely going to be the favorite for this one. I don't know what the line says. Uh, the I line has on Bryce price. Mitchell minus 165, Charles Rosa plus 150. So close, very close fight. Okay. But but Bryce Mitchell is favored. So you, you've yeah. hyped him up. He sounds good. I'm going to go with Bryce Mitchell as well. He's, he's such a scrappy kid. Like, I don't know where he's from. He's from the States somewhere. I can't remember where, but he's just like one of them. Let's go hunting. Let's go fight. Let's go scrap. Oh, I love it. I love it. He, he's that type of guy. And don't get me wrong. He don't mind losing. Like He might do some crazy <laughs> and get himself in bad positions as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And that's that's his danger, right? If Charles Rosa just keeps his calm, sums him up, and lets Bryce make the mistake, then maybe. But honestly, I, I just see Bryce being a little bit a little bit too hot to handle on this one. All right, so Bryce, I think both of us are agreed on that. The line is agreed on that. Vincente Luque, number 13, welterweight versus Nico Price. The line, minus 284, Luque. Plus 230 for price. Who do you have on this one? The line is 100% right. Um, this is a rematch, if I remember rightly. Vincent Luque dominated Nico mm. Price last time. Dominated him. I think Nico Price looked half decent towards the end of the first round. Um, but Luque literally just dominated that fight. To the point where I'm a little bit surprised we've even got a rematch. But... With the lockdown in place and certain fighters not taking fights at the moment, we might actually see a few more rematches coming up uh, that we're not used to. And I, I feel like Luke is just nothing's changed in my book. Luke takes this all day long. Got it. Yeah. As as far as the lockdown, I think they're only using fighters that are currently in the U.S. They're not having anybody travel right now because of some travel restrictions. So that's yeah, kind of how they're sense. forming their cards, right? All right, so and who wants to take the fight as well? So there's, there's even though these guys are still open now for business, some of them will still refuse fights. Uh, yeah, training camps, training camps are going to be a big issue for these guys. Who could actually get in a training camp, have some training partners to work with in this? So uh, yeah, this 
Very interesting. I, I'm I'm curious to see that's, how this is going to play it's out. It's such a big thing as well. It's like none, none of these guys are going to come out and go, look, mate, I've been shadow boxing by myself for the last <laughs> six weeks. Like they're not going to come out and admit that. I've been throwing big pillows around like Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just not... We don't know if these guys have had training partners. If they have, they're not going to admit that. If they haven't, they're not going to admit that. <laughs> um, it's, it's a tough one, man. We're going to have to see how they look in the ring, right? We'll see. We'll see. Either way, it's just a sport, a fight. I am looking forward to even these early prelims. No, nothing, none of our predictions really going too off the uh, lines, but hopefully we will get some with these uh, prelims, the main prelims. And this is probably the closest line on the card right now. Uriah Hall, Jacare Souza, super close line, minus 125, plus 105. Jacare is favored. Hall, slight underdog, but this is a fight that could go either way. Number 10, Hall, middleweight. Number 14, Souza, Jacare just uh, got all that world of experience, that BJJ experience. How do you see this fight going? This is such a tough fight to call. This, in my mind, depends a little bit how Uriah Hall's going on at the moment. He can take a lot of baggage into the ring with him and he's got a little bit of quit in him. I'm a big Uriah Hall fan, but he has got a little bit of quit in him. D'Souza as well, sorry, Souza as well, also has that a lot going on. Neither of them are getting any younger. I think Souza should win this, but it's going to be a super close fight. This, yeah, this one's razor thin. You know what? I'm going to go with Hall on this one. I'm going to go against you. I'm going to go against the betting line. I'm going to go Hall on this one just because of the age factor. Now that may now with not training, that may come back to bite him. You know, if if you get two guys, neither of them training, you got to go with the more experienced guy. But I'm going to go with Hall because he he does. He's very up and down fighter. Sometimes he shows yeah. up and he's amazing. Sometimes he's just not going to show up. We'll see what happens, but I, I, my pick is going to be Hall for this fight. It's a, it's a solid pick. This fight really could go either way, but Hall's not getting any younger either. And yeah. I feel like Hall has put his body through more wars, you know, than than Sousa. Sousa, Sousa's a real technical, yeah. real technical fighter. And Hall gets in there, gets in the mix of it. And I feel like just that that's going to take a toll on your body overall. I think Sousa's probably in better shape for this. I mean, if you if you look at both of these guys, I, I, you got to go with uh, Souza on the ground, Hall standing up, and I guess who's who's going to control where the fight is is going to dictate who's going to win this one. So yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens in this one. I went a, a little bit against the grain with this one, but let, let's let's talk about this one. This was a very interesting fight. Women's strawweight, Karate Hottie, Michelle Waterson, number eight, Carla Sparza, number seven. On paper, this one very close as well. Carla Sparza, slight favorite, minus 160. Michelle Watterson with a plus 135. How do you see this fight going? Well, this is my time to go against the betting line. I am oh. going to go for the karate hottie. And I think Watterson just might just might win this. You know, them, that karate stance, that karate style, it's so quick. It's so, so quick, that point fighting mentality. And I think those jabs and just... Just that speed is gonna gonna win this for Waterson. I see this going to a decision though, and going to Waterson by a decision. Oh, all right. Uh, I didn't think of the uh, the result of it, but I, I I'm super biased. I can't pick against the Karate Hadi. I gotta always pick her. <laughs> I don't care what the line says. I don't care what anybody says. She's always gonna unless she's fighting like one of the top upper echelon fighters. Then yeah, but yeah, against Carla Sparza, very good fighter. I think was the first straw weight champ. Uh, I can't remember the division, but uh, she's she's who Joanna wanted from initially. So, um, yeah, I, I'm with you. Karate Hottie, and um, I'll go round three KO. Oh, you got to no, 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 no. knockout. No, no, no. Here, 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 here. I think, I think she's going to stun her and then and then follow up with a submission. So, I'll go, I'll go Watterson by submission. Probably very Ooh. low chance of that happening, but that, that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> I wouldn't be putting your money on that if anyone's watching this for betting advice. <laughs> this is not betting advice. This is a very biased opinions right now. <laughs> All right. Heavyweights. This is very interesting. Verdum is not ranked. I guess he hasn't fought in a while. So um, not ranked. Going up against Alexei Olenek. And I got to remember him from the time that he was being mounted 
and choke the guy out with an Ezekiel choke from the bottom. And, and apparently he's done that many, many times before. Uh, so grappling. Both of these guys grapplers. As far as the line, uh, we got Verdum. A heavy, heavy favorite. Minus 330. Even though he hasn't fought in a while. Olenek uh, plus 260. You going with the rank guy or are you going with the experience of Verdum for this? Fight? I am going with the experience of Verdum, but let's not make no bones about this, guys. These guys are both super experienced. I think they're the granddaddies of this division. Um, and I think Verdum is just going to be a little bit too much all round. All depends if Verdum can find his pace, obviously. Um, but if he can, if he can come anywhere near, his pace, I think he's going to be too hot to handle on this. Yeah, Verdun's, Verdun's jiu-jitsu is just so good. But Olena, he, he has a lot of submission victories as well. I think this is going to... I I still think Verdun is going to win, but I think this is going to be a lot closer fight than would be indicated by the betting odds. I think 330 is just mm. huge, huge. But uh, especially with that long layoff he has. I mean, he's not even ranked because he's been laid off for so long. But I do see Verdum winning. I'm going to go submission because that's what he does. Um, let's say round two. Round How two. Do you see so this one I like that. I like that. I think it will be by a sub. Um, Verdum's probably better striking as well. Um, he has been working on his maybe boxing it's the past few years. Yeah. I'm going to go TKO. I'm going to go a round, round two? and pound. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Bit of a ground and pound. All right. I, I like that we have some differences this time. <laughs> All right. This is the big one. The big one of the prelims, the main event from the prelims. Anthony, Showtime Pettis, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Pettis coming in at number 15 in the rankings and Donald Cerrone coming in at number six. But the favorite, as far as the betting, minus 150 for Pettis and plus 125 for Cerrone. So even though Cerrone is ranked higher, Pettis is the favorite in this fight. How do you see this fight going? I believe this is a rematch as well. And if I'm not mistaken, Pettis last time these guys fought lit Cowboy up. Um, Cowboy's obviously coming off that massive, massive defeat uh, to McGregor, which he's even stated in an interview really recently where he was like, you, you get two types of Cowboy fight. You either get Donald showing up or you get Cowboy showing up. <laughs> And Donald turn up for McGregor. Um, I don't think it matters if Donald or Cowboy show up for Pettis. I think Pettis is going to light him up again. And that pains me to say it. It really does. Because I'm such a Cowboy fan. But I, I think Pettis is just going to have him up. Yeah, you know, I, I like to go against you. But I think I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. I think Pettis is going to win this fight uh donald exactly like you said he's two fighters he's kind of like hall very inconsistent sometimes this beast shows mm -hmm. up and sometimes just the normal fighter shows up and uh, i think pettis is gonna take it on this one for for my prediction i'm gonna go round this now this is a main event of the prelims this is a five round fight or is only the main event gets these i'm pretty three. sure this is still a three round fight okay i'm gonna go round one late round one KO Pettis. Stole my prediction. Right what is there. your prediction? <laughs> yeah, round one all, all day right, long. All right. Unfortunately, I guess we're agreeing on this one. We can't have too much debate on this one. So yeah. let's go to this one. The main card. There are a lot of uh, big fights here. Let's start with this one right here. Formal, former uh, Carolina Panther Greg Hardy against Jorgen DiCastro. Not too familiar with uh, DiCastro. And uh, Greg Hardy's looked pretty good in MMA. Uh, the line, Hardy is favored, minus 195, DiCastro plus 165. Neither of them are ranked. How do you see this fight going? I don't know much about either of these guys, to be honest. I've seen a little bit of Hardy, nothing of DiCastro. Um, so just of what I've seen, I'm going to go with Hardy. But honestly, that is a, a put me hands up, stab in the dark, throw a dart at it. I don't know. Yeah, just, just looking at the line and just looking at their uh, initial picture right here, I think Greg Hardy looks like he's a little more in shape, although I don't know when they took these pictures. Maybe with this uh, quarantine, could be either way. And uh, just because I know Hardy from football, watching the NFL, I'm going to have to pick Hardy. So that's that's where it is. Uh, you you want to give a prediction around in this one or you want to move on to some that we know I'd, better? Uh, I'd move that one on because honestly... Okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. 
Jeremy Stevens, Calvin Qatar. Featherweight bout. Both of these guys are ranked number seven for Stevens, number nine for Qatar. And the line, minus 240 for Qatar Stevens, plus 200. He's actually the, I, I would. I was thinking Stevens would be the favorite, but Qatar is the favorite here. How do you see this fight going? I would have also put Stevens at the favorite. I'm, I'm looking to see if I'm reading that wrong, but yeah, Qatar is the favorite here. And that that's that's a big swing there on all on that betting line. That is a big swing, considering we both would have put the other guy at the favorite. Yeah, so <laughs> I, guess, I guess both of us are picking Jeremy Stevens. How do you see this fight going, though? Well, sometimes when a betting line swings that far out, I feel like there's something that I don't know in the, the camp. Mob or involved, like that. The mob involved, the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just feel like there's something, there's some information out there that I haven't seen. Because as far as I'm concerned, on paper, I feel like Stevens should have this. That's a big, that's a big line though. Minus 240 is a pretty big, big spread. So I, I, maybe I'm missing something as well. But I, with with the information I know right now, I think I'm going to go with Stevens. Yeah, I, I would I would stay with Stevens on this without a shadow of a doubt. If it weren't for the betting line, if I had to make the line up in my head, I would have put Stevens well ahead. Well, maybe not well ahead, but it's still going to be a pretty close fight. Um, but I think Stevens has got the edge on Qatar. Where do you see this fight uh, finishing? On the ground, standing up, or decision? Round two, stoppage. By what? <laughs> TKO. 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 All right, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Qatar a little more respect because he is the favorite here. I'm gonna go round three, stoppage by Stevens. I like it. Both okay. staying on, <laughs> on that one. I like it. All right, th this is the big guns coming out, man. And Ganu rose and strike. These are some heavy, heavy hitters. They have some common opponents. One of them is the Reem, and man, both some like. Highlight real knockouts over one of my favorite fighters, the Reem. These guys have some power as far as the betting line. And Ganu is a heavy favorite, minus 280. Rosenstrei has uh, plus 230. This fight could end in one punch. Literally. Either of these guys can end this fight in one punch. Yeah. Who do you, uh, how do you see this fight going? Who, who do you think is going to get the edge on this fight? This is such a crazy fight to call because honestly, they both got such tremendous <laughs> knockout power that to make him such a heavy favor, in my opinion, is almost worth chucking some money on Rosenstrike because he could literally end it in one punch. Yeah. Like to make such a heavy favor when either of them could knock the other out at any point. Yeah. <laughs> is is pretty balmy to me um so just to go against the grain i'm gonna go rose and strike oh okay and you see this as uh him working him or just a flash punch knockout just a flash overhand right so yeah. oh, good night overhand right kind of like it and and is this gonna be him dominated kind of like he was against Overeem and just coming back with that one punch and ending the fight with seconds to go or Early. How do you see this fight going? I can see this overhand right coming off in the middle of an exchange fairly early on, where maybe Nagano still hasn't quite found his rhythm yet. Early exchanges going Nagano's way. Rosenstrike time and comes in with a bit of a haymaker. And that's the end of the fight, lads. All right. <laughs> early in the early in the first. All right. I think it's also gonna be in the first. I don't think early in the first, but I'm gonna go with the betting line here and go with Nganu. I think he technically he's a little more sound. Uh, when I saw Rosenstrike against Overeem, who granted is one of the top kickboxers in all of MMA, he was not winning that fight until that final punch. So I think skill wise, I'm gonna have to give it to Engano a little bit. But yeah, either either one of these guys, one punch and it is over. So oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I, I also agree way. that Engano is by miles the better fighter. Yeah. You know, miles more technical. But these guys have just got such tremendous knockout power that it, it could go either which way. It so definitely, it definitely can. I'm going here for a little bit of controversy. All right, and I'm going to go against you and go with Nganu. Ooh, whoa. Now we're on to the two big fights. Let's talk about this one first. Henry Cejudo. Very strong. Wrestling background. Dominic Cruz. Pretty much a very well-rounded fighter. Very... Very cerebral fighter. And he has a long, long layoff he has been coming off of. Uh, that he is coming off of, excuse me. 
Henry Zahuna, is. pretty big favorite. Minus 220, Dominic Cruz plus 180, as you probably would expect for someone coming off such a long layoff. A lot of injuries. I'm not sure how much he's, of training he's doing. So how do you see this fight going? Genuinely feel like Dominic Cruz has got probably one of the highest fight IQs in the game. Like the way that he calls a fight, the way that he trains, the way that he works smart i would say he's a very smart worker as to opposed to a no, don't get me wrong he works hard as well but he works smart yeah. i feel like dominic cruz has got the advantage in this fight everywhere just mm. everywhere I've, i feel like his even his even even wrestling game, even wrestling he, maybe not on the actual takedowns but do you really want to take down dominic cruz i don't, I don't know so. what i don't know what because dominic cruz is so well-rounded Henry Zahudo is just, he's been on a roll ever since that uh, Demetrius Johnson fight. Just, I, I don't know how to call this. I mean, I mean uh, the, that long layoff is a big question for me. Uh, he hasn't fought We've in a while. We've seen him come back, though. We've seen him come back from long layoffs before. And yes. that ring rust has never really creeped into Cruz. And yeah. I believe that's due to his high fight IQ. Yeah, like, against TJ, he looked very good. Against Mizugaki, mm. he looked very good coming off long layoffs. Ah, this is this is such a hard fight to call because both of these guys are such like top level talent, and it's just the the, the big question is is it, did Dominic get Cruz get old during that layoff? Because you know getting old that could happen in a flash overnight. I'm not sure if he's you're the same you're, fighter. You're telling me it can. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 who are you picking? You're you're going with Dominic on this one. I'm going with Dominic Cruz. I can't I can't go against decision Dominic Cruz this stoppage. Fight. This is going to be a five round fight because I think there is a title on the line. If this is a five round, to be fair, Dominic Cruz wins by nine times out of ten by decision. Right? He. I, I just feel, yeah, this will be a decision, Dominic Cruz. Yeah, he's his, animus, though. He's None got, of this split movement. decision, he, can't he will touch win him. it, hands down. All right. Um, God, I want to pick against you. I wanted to pick Cruz and have you go with Cejudo and like, oh, yeah, we... He's the he's he's a, he's an underdog. He's coming off a long layoff. But I don't know how you could pick against Dominic Cruz, even against someone as beastly as Henry Cejudo. With that, with that mm -hmm. wrestling pedigree, ah, I want to pick. Uh, I want to pick against you, but I, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to pick against Dominic on this one. But yeah, yeah I, and he's not. A, he's not a. He's not that much of a finisher. He's not. He doesn't have that knockout power. He just makes you miss, and you can't hit him. You can't do your thing. He switches angles so well. Um, un uh, unless this fight goes to the ground, I don't. I don't see Cejudo really. Winning uh, a stand-up war against Cruz, I, I, he's very hard to hit. Um, yeah, Dominic Cruz. I will go. I, I think he. I think it's going to be a decision. Or, unanimous or, or, or split. Uh, unanimous. Unanimous. Yeah. I don't. I, unless unless Cejudo gets this fight to the ground and just grounds and pounds him, or just holds him there. I don't see him winning a stand-up war. So, uh, and, and Dominic has very good takedown defense. Uh, the big question for me is the layoff and uh, how their training has been going, which neither of us will know up until that day, and, until probably post-fight interviews on how their training has been going. So, Even then, I don't think these guys are going to be honest about a lot of their training camps, whether or not they've had people to spar with, whether or not they've been in six weeks camps, whether or not they've been in longer camps because they were scheduled to fight before this. Yeah. Um, have they just continued their training? Did this whole lockdown thing come into effect and then go, oh, well, let's go raid the fridge like most of us have done. Um, we just don't know. We just don't know. All right. Well, we will see. It's going to play out tomorrow. We will see. And I guess we'll meet up and uh, see who is right and who is wrong. I guess we're both picking the same fighter, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with this. Uh, this is a very close fight. A lot closer than the betting odds would indicate. For me, I, this one's super, yeah, super close for me. All right, the big one right here. Super risky fight for Tony Ferguson. I mean, he has some big fights that uh, people are looking at with uh, Khabib. A big fight potentially with Connor, And Gagey is someone that can beat Ferguson. So this is a very risky fight. Win, lose, or draw. You got to commend Tony for taking this fight. 
But Gagey is very, very solid, very scary opponent. Betting line, not super, super close, but it is minus 194 Ferguson. Gagey with a plus 160. I don't know how I could pick against Ferguson unless I'm trying to uh, to be the spoiler here. And, uh, but I think I will be the spoiler and pick Gagey for this fight. How do you see this okay. fight going? Tony's that Tony's a beast, right? He's an absolute beast. And Both of these guys the are beasts, guy. though, right? They are, but Tony's the type of guy that's like he's not even thinking about the next fight. He's thinking about right now. Like, yes, he's got he's big a little money insane. Fight, he's a little insane. It will take it. He's crazy. He's stone cold crazy. <laughs> yes, and that's why I've got to back him because he's loony. Because <laughs> right? so, to be fair, the smart play here, right? The smart play for Ferguson. Khabib's now off the table. Do you want to fight? No. No, I'll wait for that fight. I'll wait for that fight. Wait I'll wait for, for that fight. big money fight, Those right? are my two big money fights. I'll wait for one of them. But Tony's like, yeah, I'll fight whoever, man. Like, I don't <laughs> care. I don't care whether they're in the rankings. I don't care like what what they're doing because he, he's that confident on his game. And I feel like I've got to back Ferguson as a result of that confidence. Uh, you got to give him respect for, for for taking this fight, like I said, because this is a highly risky career move. If he wins, cool, everything's kind of the same. I don't think it builds more hype for a Khabib fight if he comes off a win, but no. a loss could be devastating. I mean, he'd need a few more fights to climb back in there and then potentially a Conor fighter or a Khabib fight after that because I don't think they can make a Khabib-Tony fight or a Khabib uh, or a Conor-Tony uh, fight if he comes off a loss after, uh, for Gagey. So they very, could still very, probably very make risky. a Khabib fight. They could still probably make a Tony Khabib fight. I don't think they could make a, a Tony Connor fight off the back of a loss. Uh, but this is, so this is such a big gamble for Tony Ferguson. Yeah. You got to um, give him props for taking this. such a tough guy to fight. Like, fair play to him. I, I think he'll have it, though. I think he'll have it. All right. Well, I, 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 like I said, I, I don't know how you could pick against Tony, but I'm doing it. I'm picking against Tony, and we will see what happens. How's he going to lose then? All right. Round three. KO. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The most Ooh. unlikely of scenarios, but that's that's what I'm picking, guys. Oh, Ferguson's <laughs> getting knocked out. I'm going against the grain with all these. Holy uh, moly. I, I don't think Gagey. I don't. Yeah. I mean, Gagey's a wrestler. Tony. Tony's very good on the ground, though. I don't think I don't see Tony getting subbed. I, I think if Gagey is going to win it, he's going to stop Tony's. Uh, takedowns and keep it on the feet. And I don't know. So maybe Tony will get tired. I don't see Tony getting tired either, but. Don't get tired. All right. That, uh, Tony ain't slept Gagey. in 10 years. Tony don't get tired. <laughs> weird, weird things happen. That's what I'm picking. Uh, what are you picking? Probably something a little more conventional. Probably something a little more likely to happen. What is? What are your picks for this? this Ferguson, fight? second round knockout. Knockout, okay. Knockout. All right. So if neither of them get knocked out, if it ends in three, then I guess I'm a little closer, right? Oh, we'll have to see about that. I've got the we'll right point. We'll that. see what happens with this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should pick, switch my pick because Tony's... Nah, you know what? No, it's not Screw good it. now. It's Screw not good it. now. It's Screw not it. Good. Screw it's it. Not good. You no. ain't changing. Gagey, Gagey, <laughs> round three, knockout. Put it in the books, guys. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I feel uh, like most of Ali's picks have literally been to be controversial today. Some of them are. <laughs> some of them purposely were. <laughs> All right. Shanksy, we will see what happens. I, I am looking forward to this. Either way, this is going to be a good weekend because sports are back. UFC is back. Fighting is back. And uh, yes, our videos, our collabs are back. It's, I, 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 I miss talking to you, my friend. Man, I would super enjoy doing these little videos, man. <laughs> super enjoy them. Massive shout out to you guys watching them. I hope you enjoy the content as always. And uh, I hope you enjoy the fights coming up this weekend. And yes. all. all right. And before you go, Shanksy, tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah, guys, you can find me over at Twitch where I live stream, uh, which is www.twitch.tv forward slash Shanksy. Link will be down below or on YouTube. Shanksy or Shanksy Reacts. Again, nice. they'll be down below. That's a that's a fun second channel you have now. And, and on the stream, are you are you streaming every single day? I stream five days a week, and okay. I do a lot of variety games. So I do a little bit of Marvel Strike Force. We're doing a Final Fantasy VII um, remake playthrough at the moment, and a whole lot of Escape from Tarkov as well. Got it, got it, guys. Check him out. Like you said, links are down below. 
and more videos guys now that the ufc is back hopefully this becomes a thing again because it was, it was I, I was hoping it'd become a thing i had fun talking with you so uh, we, yes. we, i think we literally got into that bit of a rotation Yes. And then this all happened. And then, and, then, like, and, then, and then they shut it down. So we yep. got three fights coming up. We got another fight on Wednesday. Hopefully we could meet up before that and talk about that fight. And then we got another fight, UFC fight next Saturday. So lots of we UFC guys. <laughs> lots of UFC. Oh, he, you know what? He he lost to Rosenstrike and those guys, but he's still my favorite fighter just because of Uberim, his past. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the same guy, but he's still my favorite fighter. All right, guys, subscribe. More stuff coming. Um, all that good stuff. Notification bell. Share this with your friends, guys. All your UFC fan fans. Uh, if you want to hear a couple like people talking about this and uh, giving their opinion, whether it's right or wrong, hopefully it's at least entertaining for you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe and all that. And I will see you guys next time. Links down below. Shanksy, give me a Hulk fist bump before you go, brother. Let's go! Oh, Fizzbo Valley Flying Shanksy out, baby!